I'm asked an awful lot of questions about the chrome wheels on the Triumph Bonnevilles. And I have to say, the chrome on the new watercolour Bonnevilles isn't great. It's always been one of my major criticisms of the bikes. And I've heard from a lot of people pulling the hair out over a bike that's only two or three months old with rusty chrome rims and spokes. And I agree with a lot of you, for the price of these bikes, there should be polished stainless steel, but they're not, so we just have to deal with it. Now, I don't have any rusty rims or spokes to show you, so I can't go through the process of cleaning rust off safely. That's something I'm going to have to deal with in the future in another video if I can find some rusty chrome parts that are suitable. The best advice I can give you if you have a little surface rust on chrome is to take some normal household aluminium baking foil. Aluminium is a lot softer than chrome, but it's harder than ferrous oxide rust. Moistened with some water and used like sandpaper, it can remove rust quite safely without causing damage to your chrome. And that is basically the only method I can recommend for removing light rust. One thing that you should never do is use any type of abrasive like wire wool, no matter how fine it is. Any type of abrasive paper or scotch pads or whatever equivalent products you might get your hands on. Yes, they will all remove the rust, but in the process they will completely ruin your wheels and your spokes. And once you've used them, masses of rust will be a common feature on those components. Don't do it. Now, I am going to deal with some other wheel finishing materials as well in this video, but we'll kick off with the chrome, because that seems to give people the major headaches over other finishes. Now, the best way of keeping chrome looking good is protection. Any seasoned chrome plater will tell you that the very best material to use on chrome is a good quality can or bat wax to hermetically seal the chrome and keep the elements and contaminants off it. Now that's all well and good and I completely agree with that philosophy but the problem with wheels is that they are on the front line. Your wheels are the very first to encounter all the dirt and contaminants that the road throws up and they get more than the fair share of those contaminants. They're also the most difficult and tedious components on the bike to clean. So in many cases, they're the first part of the bike to show up that wear and tear and corrosion. Now, in normal times, when you're able to ride your bike whenever you like, wherever you like, I fully understand people don't want to spend hours on end polishing and cleaning the rims. And a liberal coating of a maintenance spray or anti-corrosion spray applied with a cloth will go a long way to preserving your wheels, although it doesn't look fantastic. It also picks up a lot of dirt in dusty conditions. But at the moment, we have, in general, a lot of time to spare. So I thought now is probably the best time to go through the full procedure of how to properly clean and protect your chrome wheels, your anodized aluminium wheels, even painted alloy wheels to keep them looking as good as possible for as long as possible. Now, the T120 is now four years old. It's been through three winters. Granted, I don't have to commute and I can pick and choose the times in winter when I ride the bike. But as a lot of people can attest to with these bikes, even storing it in a damp garage over winter and not riding it all will result in rust starting to form especially on the spokes now right from new i've always used a good can over wax on these wheels and it's done the job really well granted they don't look like new but they're not far off as new condition very recently a viewer got in touch with me who runs a family-run valentine supply business here in the uk a company called Auto Bright Direct. Now, he asked me if I'd like to have a look at some of their valeting products. I'm always very keen to help promote UK businesses, if I can. But as you know, I'm also a bit 
picky, especially when it comes to valeting products, and he sent me a whole box of samples. And really, I need to put these products through the paces before I'm prepared to stick my neck out and recommend them. But one product that did catch my eye is this wheel sealant. Now, the sample that they sent me was tiny, and believe it or not, when I actually filmed this, this tin had already done two cars and two motorcycles, so it does go a long way. I am a firm believer in the right tool for the job, and wheel waxes or wheel sealants are not a new thing, they've been around for some time. But historically, they were always very expensive, so I've avoided them. In fact, to be honest, they still are. It's just that Autobright are making these very small tins, which are ideal for bikers and come in at less than £10. Now, this wax, because that's what I think it is, is suitable for all paint finishes, all metals, and for chrome. So basically, just about any finish you're likely to come across on an automotive wheel. Last year when I bought the Mini, it came with these black net spoke wheels, which look lovely, but they are a nightmare to look after. And on Sunday, I spent a fair few hours, first of all, cleaning these up, and then using this wheel sealant on them. And I'm very pleased with the results. Now, the problem with the finish on these wheels is you've only got to go for a two mile run and the brake dust just covers them. I have tried using a normal car norber wax, but the problem with car wheels, especially alloys like these, is they tend to get quite warm in use as the heat from the disc brakes transfer into the wheel. Also, brake dust itself, as it's covering the wheels, can be quite hot. So the wax doesn't last very long, three or four days of normal average use, and you wouldn't know that there'd ever been any wax on them. As in a lot of cases, these wheel waxes or wheel sealants tend to be a sort of closely guarded secret, the formula that is, but generally they're a mixture of both synthetic and natural waxes fortified with resins and polymers, mixed together in a solvent-based carrier. The difference between a wheel wax and a normal automotive wax however is that it has quite a high degree of heat resistance. It also tends to be quite a bit tougher. Instructions for use are pretty much the same as any automotive wax. It needs to be applied to a clean dry surface, left for 15 minutes to dry and then buffed off with a soft cloth. For maximum durability they recommend three coats which is the same as any automotive wax. And I would recommend leaving at least 8 hours, preferably 24 hours between the application of each coat. And I should stress that as an example of how much I actually used from that tin in the footage I showed a few minutes ago, I did only put one coat on each of those vehicles. Now longevity I will report back on another time, but one thing I did notice immediately, I had to do a sort of a 6 mile round trip to get some groceries in on Monday and brake dust build up on the wheels was minimal compared to what I normally see so that's a positive. Now going back to your chrome wheels the first thing you need to do is make sure that they're clean and dry. I don't recommend that you use chrome cleaner on chrome very often but before applying this wax it may be a good idea to just go over all your rims and spokes with a good quality cleaner suitable for use on chrome i.e. if it is abrasive it should be a very very fine abrasive and this is mainly to get rid of any tar spots insect deposits or water spots because all that will happen is this wax will just seal them in and they'll never go just get rid of all the blemishes that you can and then it's time to apply the wax. Now you don't need to put a lot of this wax in, it's one of those cases where less is more. Using a soft microfiber cloth just put a very thin smear onto the surfaces. 
it should be barely visible as a light haze. Putting more on won't give more protection, it just means that you're wasting the product. What is more important is to ensure that you've covered every square millimetre of that exposed metal surface. Get right to the edges of your rims, and if you're treating your spokes, make sure that you get all around the spoke nipples where they go into the rims, all those areas that are likely to catch moisture because that's where the corrosion is going to start. Now, for doing your front wheel, it's really handy having a wheel roller. It makes a difficult job just that little bit easier and I'll leave a link in the video description down below for the one that I use. And once you've made a thorough job of coating all those chrome surfaces with this polish, leave it for at least 15 minutes. If you go on it too quickly and don't leave it long enough, it tends to be a little bit tacky and you'll find that your cloth will stick to it, which makes the job just that little bit more difficult. Leave it for a minimum of 15 minutes. Even then, depending on the ambient temperatures, if it still feels a bit tacky, leave it longer. After your 15 minutes or so, take a clean, soft microfiber cloth and buff it up. And I have to say, this wax is really good quality. It puts an excellent shine on the chrome. Now, another use for this wax that did sort of come into my head is it may be useful for use on chrome exhaust systems. Perhaps not header pipes, but certainly the silencers would benefit from a few coats of this wax a year. It doesn't have any cut in it, although it does have a slight solvent cleaning power because of the solvents that are used in it. Just make sure that when you're buffing, you do have a soft, clean microfiber cloth. And if it starts to get a bit soiled, either keep changing the area so that you've got a clean area or get a fresh one. Three coats should give very good protection throughout the summer months. And I would recommend that you probably repeat this about twice a year. I don't know, we'll see how long it lasts in practice. Either way, it's a good product and I think you're probably going to get three or four years out of one of these small tins if you're just using it on your bike. Now, the procedure for painted surfaces and for anodized aluminium is exactly the same. But whereas you can use some form of chrome polish on chrome, on painted and anodized aluminium surfaces, I would recommend just using a naphtha-based pre-paint white. This will remove most contaminants, including tar and water spots, and it provides a good clean surface ready for the wax to go on. Obviously, you should not use any form of metal polish on anodizing because it will wear through it and spoil the look. Apply the wheel sealant in exactly the same way, leave it for 15 minutes and then just buff it up. And I have to say, it really does improve the look of anodized finishes. Now, if you follow this procedure at least twice a year, if you're just a summer rider, once in spring and then once at the end of summer when you're ready to put the bike away for winter, chrome painted and anodized wheels should last a couple of decades and still look pretty good. What I will say is that in all cases, you know, bikes nowadays are built down to a price, not up to a specification. And if you neglect these sorts of components, they are, I'm afraid, going to look pretty rough within two or three seasons. And as some of you have encountered, within two or three months. Nothing, I'm afraid, is maintenance free. You've got to look after these things. Now, I will, of course, leave a link for this wheel sealant in the video description down below, as well as a link to the wheel roller that I use. And I did actually make a video review of the wheel roller last year, so if you need more information, feel free to peruse my extensive collection of videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching this and my other videos. I really do appreciate your support. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you are subscribed, don't forget to hit the notification tab so that you can be informed of any future uploads. I will, as always, be back on Friday, so until then, if you have to ride, please ride safely. And I'll see you soon.